Uh, hey YouTube, uh, today's video is going to be a quick tip kind of video. Uh, as you can see here, I've got a V6 um, 3.0 Duratec in a 2001 Ford Escape. And you might be able to see here, but I am working on changing the spark plugs out. And I was doing the front bank here and came across a relatively common issue now these vehicles are getting a little older but anyway the issue is as you can see here I'm trying to remove the coil and the bolt just keeps spinning and spinning and spinning uh, this is an issue I see a lot um, in climates like uh, here in Alaska or in the Midwest where we have a lot of corrosion um, and these vehicles are getting pretty old too so you know this one's 19 20 years old and um, anyway um, I don't think there's any videos on YouTube land that uh, show how to get get these coils off if you've got the bolt that's just spinning in here. So what happens is the nut cert that's in the in the plastic uh, valve cover here it start it starts spinning in its bore. So the, the bolt gets corroded to the brass insert and then you try to break the uh, bolt free and it just ends up breaking the brass insert free from the plastic valve cover. Um, you do not have to break the coil off to get to it. So I'm just going to show you uh, one one method I use to get these out. Okay, hopefully I can get you some clear footage here. But um, I'm just working on the center coil here, which uh, I believe is cylinder, uh, cylinder 5. So it's a Ford coil, but this method applies to any of them, really. So as you can see here... The bolt spinning and the coil is not coming loose. Um, I've already unplugged the electrical connector so we don't have to worry about that. So what I've got here is a panel um, tool here. It's a cat claw or, or similar but um, you use this to pry um, the push fasteners um, out of the door or whatever you know. These, um, these come in very handy uh, working on more modern vehicles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tool here and just put it right underneath the coil right here. Um, you can see here I'm just pushing a little bit. You don't have to use a lot of force. But what I'll do here is push up against the um, towards you know towards the sky. So we're we're leveraging like this, but not a whole lot. You just want to push slightly. If you you go go too much, you'll break the coil. And these are not cheap, so. So what we'll do here is we'll just keep prying up. And as we pry up, you can see here um, something's releasing. Sometimes the bolt releases, sometimes it's the uh, sometimes it's the insert. So as you can see here, I got the insert out along with oh come on. Along with excuse me, along with the, uh, the rest of the coil. So this is the piece in question right here. It's a brass insert. Um, it tends to seize to the steel bolt. Uh, probably a, a case of dissimilar metal corrosion. So if we want to free the insert from the bolt here, just use a pair of pliers and just grab onto it like so. And usually it doesn't take much torque to break it free from the insert. So we'll just do this on camera here. There you go. So now the bolt is coming free. They're rather long bolts. And as you can see, the insert is not damaged from doing this. Um, from here, what I'll normally do is like spray uh, brake clean or something in the hole here to get it clean. You might want to blow some compressed air in it. And we'll apply some glue of sorts to the outside of this um, nut cert, basically. And we'll just jam it back in the hole and let it cure. And proceed with just replacing the spark plugs. All right, well, since we're here and I got one more to do, um, what I'll do is I'll just repeat the procedure here. 
and just uh, show you that this is, can be done without breaking anything. Um, might have to switch hands around here so that I'm not in your view. But here you go. So you see I repositioned it. And eventually it comes free. So now that coils out. We didn't break it. Again, we'll use the pliers. Um, these Nipex pliers are handy for this kind of work. They, uh, they grip really well. Good high quality pliers. So um, we'll shrink it down here. I'm just, uh, there we go. The bolt's free. So we got the bolt free, we got the insert out without damaging anything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clean that hole as well. And um, I'll get back to you once I um, get a proper um, type of uh, adhesive here. All right, so what I'm gonna use today is just a two part epoxy. Um, this is just what I had lying around in the shop. Uh, I'm just gonna mix a little bit up here and then just uh, Put a little bit on this insert and then shove it into the hole and let it cure. It's not going to take a whole lot, so it's probably more than enough. <clears throat> And then we'll uh, just mix it up here with a crap screwdriver. So we feel it's sufficiently mixed. I can feel it starting to set up. This is a uh, pretty Quick cure stuff. This is, I think, five minute or something like that. So I'm just going to work quickly here. Um, what I'll do is I'll thread one of the one of the coil bolts on here, just to give me something to hold on to. And then we'll just put a little bit, a little bit of uh, this epoxy on the serrated parts of the insert here probably too much anyway just try to do that and from here I'll stick it in to the opening in the valve cover which hopefully you can see here on frame um, what I'll do here is I'll just shove it in just like so and then unthread unthread the bolt Now, I'll inspect with a flashlight to make sure no epoxy made it into the threads. So it's very important that you uh, not apply too much of this epoxy. So you don't want to have this happen again if the bolt, will, if the bolt seizes up to the uh, epoxy because there's some in the threads and you're going to be back in these shoes again the next time you do spark plug or coil, coil on plug change. So we just put some here. Hopefully we're in frame. Just try to get it here. We're trying to avoid the slot here. That way we don't get it in the threads. And again, with the hole cleaned out and dry, I'm just gonna insert the Nut cert in here. Take it out. Take that bolt out. And just make sure we didn't get any in the threads. And we'll let this cure. We will let this cure um, for however long the epoxy needs a cure for. So once that's done, I'll get back to you.
and we'll continue on and finish the video. All right, so we've given this some time to cure. Uh, it appears to me that the nut certs in there are secure. Uh, the adhesive or the epoxy has a cured. So now we could go ahead and put the ignition coils back on. Um, so what I've done here is I've added some NICs to the threads, not a whole lot. Let's see if we can focus, not a whole lot. We just wanna put a little coating on it so that these threads are lubricated and the uh, coils don't end up getting stuck on there, you know. So go ahead and grab a coil pack. Uh, I like to use some silicone electrical grease um, on the inside here. Just put a little coating there like so. And then again on this surface right here, surface that it mates up to on the valve cover. So just put a little bit here. Uh, this just keeps moisture and such out. So as you can see, I just put a little coating around this lip right here and then insert it back into the hole. All right, so once there, we can put the bolt on for the coil on plug. Should thread in very nicely by hand, especially with that anti seize applied. And then we'll just use a very small quarter inch drive ratchet, this you know eight millimeter socket head here, and we'll just get it in here. These bolts do not need to be in here very tight. All they do is just keep the coil from uh, moving around and popping off. So about that much is all you need. So as you can see, it did not take much torque at all to uh, to tighten that that bolt um, you just want to get it just barely snug uh, if you have a nut driver just you know a turn of a wrist is all you need i'm going to continue on with these remaining two spark plugs and coils and um, that's it hopefully this quick tip helps uh, if you like the video click on the like button uh, if you have any comments questions or concerns go ahead and leave a, a comment in the comment section and if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel so you can see more content like this. So anyway, uh, until next time, have a great day, and we'll see you later.